Greetings to everyone. Myself Prata from BSB Engineering College, working as assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Today I am going to tell about the user datagram protocol. Uh, user datagram protocol is a, one of the protocol in the transport layer. So before going to see the user datagram protocol, let me see the transport layer. So transport layer is a fourth layer of the OSC model and it is a core of the internet protocol. So in the OSC referential model, it is a fourth layer, transport layer. In the three layer, lower layer, the data is splitted and framed as a packet. And the transport layer, the packet will transfer from one host to another host. So it is called a process to process communication. It responds to service request from session layer and issues service request to the network layer. Which means that initially, uh, in the OSC referential model having the interaction between the layers. So network layer will get the services from the transport layer. So next is so provides a transfer, transparent transfer of data between hosts. So whatever the data received from the uh, source host will be uh, received in the uh, end system. So it is called a transparent data service. It provides end-to-end -end control and information transfer with quality of service needed by the application program. So end-to-end -end control, which means that uh, most probably the data will be transferred from for one source to another destination source in by means of uh, packets in order by order. So the data will be retrieved in the receiver end as the same way. So having the end to end control to receive the, all the bytes information properly. True end to end layer implemented in all end systems. So true end whatever data sent by the server uh, will be received in the client side. So the data will be, there is no layer, loss of data occurs in the transport layer. So that we are telling that this is a transport layer, this is a true layer. Next. So transport layer functions and services. So what are the functions are provided by the transport layer? First one is process to process communication. Second, addressing. Third, encapsulation and decapsulation. Fourth one, multiplexing and demultiplexing. Fifth one, flow control. Sixth, error control. And the seventh, congestion control. So the transport layer will have the uh, process to process communication. Process in the sense in the one system will communicate with the other layers in the other system. That is the source will have the process in the transport layer will communicate with the process in the destination uh, system. So addressing here is uh, mainly in the transport layer the packet will send to the end system by addressing of port numbers. So port numbers are specified in the transport layer. Encapsulation and decapsulation. So once the data is uh, processed, then data will be sent to the destination and it will be converted into the uh, in other information along with the packet. So that is the encapsulation. In the receiver send, the same packet will be decapsulated to the original format. Then uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing. So data is not sent as is it from the source to destination. It will convert it into the form of that is the modulation will be changed digital and this multiplexing and demultiplexing. Flow control. So the packets are passing from end to end by order or it will pass in any order. So that you know, the flow control is necessary to receive in the receiver end. So that is a sending a packet from the source node will be received in the destination side without any congestion. Error control. Error control, no, in the, suppose uh, in the transport layer may be error occur. There is a uh, loss of uh, packets or maybe congestion occurs in the sense there may be a traffic occurs. So there is an error control is necessary. So transport layer will provide the error control mechanism. Congestion control. When the congestion will occur, suppose no, if the payload of the network is crashes, that is the capacity of the network. When the payload is greater than the capacity of the network, then automatically congestion will occur. So the transport layer will provide the congestion control. If the congestion control is, uh, is there, then automatically error will be reduced. So these are only main services provided by the transport layer. So transport layers are associated with uh, three things. Three type of protocols are there in the transport layer. So this is a popular known uh, three protocols. Nowadays, in some other protocols also used, but these three packet, three protocols are commonly used in the transport layer. One is UDP, user datagram protocol, second TCP, transmission control protocol, and third one is SETP, stream control transmission protocol. 
Usually the UDP and TCP having the special features for transferring the packet. But in the SCTP, it, it is combines the features of TCP and UDP and also it has the extra features for the transmission. Next. User data graph protocol. So today I am going to explain about the first protocol, user data graph protocol. User data graph protocol is a connectionless unreliable transport protocol. So it is called a un connectionless and unreliable. Connectionless which means that if uh, a packet sent from one host to another host, the data will be uh, sent, uh, the packet will be sent in the network without connection. So there is no need the end host in the connection and uh, unreliable which means that the packet is sent to the address even uh, the host is not connected the end host is not connected the packet will be sent in the root so that it is a unreliable protocol whenever the host is available it can return the message otherwise it will be the, there is no confirmation that the packet sent is received in the end host UDP adds a process to process communication to best effort service provided by IP so here is UDP, uh, uh, usually transport layer provide the process to process communication. But in the UDP, no, if more the amount of packets are transferring over the network, then the efficiency improved in the case of UDP protocol. Very simple protocol using a minimum of overhead. For example, if you are transferring, just you want to send a message to the uh, host in the, in the network or uh, in any one host. Then if you want to send the data simply in the sense, UDP is the best protocol because it is efficient to send the data. The next D multiplexer which allows multiple processes on each host to communicate. So D multiplexer is very important because if once the data is sent means not actual data will be sent over the network. It will be encapsulated with some data. So D multiplexer will be there in the end client then only the data will be retrieved in the original form. UDP does not provide flow control reliable or ordered delivery. So user datagram protocol. So the name of the user datagram means datagram which means the packet in the UDP protocol is called a datagram. In the datagram delivery, once uh, address is specified then it will be sent in the route, in, it will select any route in the network, the data will be sent to the destination address. So it does provide any flow control. So because the packets will select any route to transfer. That I end end side, all the packets from the, the different route will connect, collect and uh, integrated into original form. So it is not reliable or ordered delivery. In TCP means it is ordered delivery, but UDP not supports the ordered delivery because it's not a connection oriented protocol. So connectionless. So it does not support ordered delivery. In the receiver end, it waits to receive all packets from the different route and integrate finally, so that it is a not ordered delivery. UDP can be used to send small messages where reliability is not accepted. Suppose now if in the situation not reliability is required, then UDP is the best choice to transfer the data. Small messages takes much less interaction. So, in the UDP is mainly used for broadcasting messages only. So, that is not requires a, a, any interaction. So, then if in situation, then use the UDP for the less interaction. UDP allow process to indirectly identify each other using an abstract locator called port or mailbox. Initially, no, if you are sending any messages to the end host, then it requires the mailbox or any storage. Whatever the message will be sent, it is stored in the mailbox. Then the receiver will receive when he is in the live. Example is email system. When you are sending any mails, mails to the using email system, then the send data will be stored in the mailbox. When the user is entered into the mailbox, he will retrieve the data. Next. UDP ports. So your port is nothing but it is a number. That is a channel number. Some uh, well-known UDP ports are 7 Echo, 53 BNS, triple one RPC, 161 SNMP etc. So UDP means it is a user datagram protocol, connectionless, unreliable protocol. So some uh, ports are supposed to get service. 7, port number 7 support for Echo. Then 53 for DNS, domain name servers, triple one remote procedure call, 161 
simple network management protocol. So these are the protocol supports the UDP. So if you are using this port number, then we will have the UDP services. Then when you are going to connect UDP connection, a pair of data will be used to connect. The pair of data is port and host. Port is nothing but which UDP protocol is used to connect. Then for host is nothing but the address of the end host. So you want to make any connection with the other node. Then automatically we have to specify port number and host to establish the connection. So that we are telling it is a pair is used with the key for demultiplex. In the same way, in the client side and the server side also mention that the UDP port number and the IP address. So nothing but a host here is IP address, internet protocol address. Then this is a representation of uh, packet in the UDP. Actually, uh, so SRC port is represent source port. DSP port represent destination port. Uh, the port size is a 16 bit data. So totally source port and destination port is initially mentioned. So totally 32 bit is used. 0 to 31 bit. 0 to 16 is a source bit. 0 to 15 source bit. 16 to 31 is destination port. The length and section. Length is total payload length is specified. Checksum is used for the error control. UDP is not having a specific error control mechanism, but it improves efficiency. But the verification of data, whether it is a original data has been, the data whatever sent by the source is received in the destination side is correct. That is verified by checksum only. No special error control mechanisms are available in the UDP. Then this is the variable data. So the data is a variable size. So what the payload may be varies according to the packet. User data from packet format. So as I explained in the diagram, source port number. Port number is used by the process and source port with the 16 bit long. So port number is represented in 16 bit only. If the source host is client that is sending request, that is a source port, usually it is sending request to the end host. Then the port number is the temporary one requested by the process and then chosen by UDP. So usually the source is having the so port number and port number and if the source host is client, then is sending request. The client will send request to the server. Then the port number is the temporary one requested by the process and chosen by UDP. Usually you no know, some of the port numbers are called well known port number. These port numbers are specified in the server and the client if you want to communicate with the server then he do, uses the uh, temporary port number. If the source is server sending response then it is well known port number. Example uh, well known port numbers are used in the server to identify uh, by the, either it is a UDP protocol or a TCP protocol. For example you, you, if it is a TCP protocol then uh, 21 is of uh, file transfer protocol is used. Then the UDP protocol means uh, we know that, that 7 is the echo. Then uh, 7 echo is a well known port number. If any client is particularly communicate with the server for, for any records, then it uses temporary port numbers. Next. So destination port number used by the process and destination host with the 16 bit long. As I said that the port number is specified as a 16 bit source port number and destination port number size is 16 bit only. If the destination host is a server, the client sending records, then the port number is well known port number. It is a device versa. Client has, uh, port number is a temporary port number. Server using port number is a well known port number. The destination host is client. The uh, server client is sending response. Then the port number is a temporary one copied by the server from the records packet. So every packet will have the port number as specified in the header. Header consists of source port number and destination port number. The source port number is a uh, temporary port number for records. The destination port number is a well known port number. The length. The length field of the UDP packet is the field denotes the total length of the UDP packet header plus data. So I said it is a data in the packet, UDP packet is a variable size along with the size of the data. The header size also be added. This is the original uh, length of the data specified in the field length field. The total length of any UDP diagram can be from 0 to 65,535 bytes. So it is a datagram uh, length. Initially it is limited to 65,536. 
zero to sixty by five thirty five. Check sum. UDP compute its check sum over the UDP header. The content of the message body and something called pseudo header. So pseudo header is nothing but consists of the three fields from the IP header. Oh, protocol number, source IP address, destination IP address, plus length of the UDP. So checksum is consist of such a pseudo header. It consists of protocol number, source IP address, and destination IP address. So initially it all covers the length in the field. Data. So data field defines the actual payload. Payload is nothing but the data is to be transferred from source to destination. To be transmitted, its size is the variable. So the every UDP packet has to have variable size data. Next, UDP services. So that is it provides the process to process communication. As uh, this list is usually in the transport layer services. Now I can explain that uh, what are the services are provided by the uh, UDP. So UDP process to process communication provides. Then connectionless service. Initially, uh, this uh, nature of the UDP is a connectionless service. If the sending uh, data will be received in the uh, receiver side, not necessary, the receiver is in the internet connection. Flow control. So, UDP is not supports the flow control because the uh, UDP packets are not sent in the ordered. So, the ordered delivery, so that it is not support the flow control. Error control. Except checksum, there is no special mechanism for the error control in UDP. Checksum. Uh, checksum is used for the error control. It is not having special mechanism. Only either the odd ones of the payload or even ones of payload will be added in the checksum. Conjunction control. No conjunction control will be provided by the UDP because the packets are not in the ordered packet of delivery. There is no conjunction will occur. So no need a conjunction control. Even though UDP is the efficient one because the packets will not sent to the various route. Whenever the route is available, then the, it increases the efficiency. Then encapsulation and decapsulation. Every packet is having additional information regarding the original data. So this is called encapsulated data will be decapsulated in the receiver end. So it is a one of the services provided by UDP. Then QE. So the packets will be delivered and it is maintained in the queue. The receiver end, what are the packets are receiving, it is all collected in the queue. And also in the sender side, a queue is maintained to send the packets of delivery. Then multiplexing and demultiplexing. Multiplexing is nothing but many to one. Many signals are converted into single one. Demultiplexing is vice versa. Single data to many data conversion. Next. So process to process communication. So UDP provides the process to process communication using socket address. Socket is nothing but it is a uh, interface. It is used to drive over between client to server. A combination of IP address and port numbers. Next. Conditionless services. Why UDP provides a conditionless service? Because there is no condition is established between host to host. Each user data graph sent by UDP is an independent data graph. That is, uh, whatever the data is sending from, packet sending from the source is, every packet in the delivery is independent to each other. There is no relationship between the different user data graph even. So if you know your packets are receiving from the same source, but there is no relationship between the packets received from the same source and the same destination. The user data graphs are not numbered. So why? Because uh, in the TCP, you know, in the ordered delivery of packets, so every packet having sequence number, but in the UDP, it is a uh, data gram delivery, so that there is no numbers are specified in the packet. Each user data graph can travel on different paths. As I said earlier, uh, user data grams are select a different route than to reach the destination. Next. Flow control. So it is very simple protocol. There is no flow control and hence no window mechanism is required. Window mechanism is nothing but acknowledgement verification. Once a request is sent, request is received by the receiver, then it sends the acknowledgement. So it is called a sliding window. So in the UDP, no sliding window is required. Error control. No error control except to check some. This means that the sender does not know if the message has been lost or duplicated. So this is one of the disadvantages of UDP. Once a packet is sent, it, there is no confirmation that it is maybe received in the receiver end. 
When the receiver detects the error through the checksum, the user data can find the discarded. So if found that any packet is missed, then automatically the packet is discarded. So that is there may be a loss of packet. Next. Checksum. UDP checksum calculation includes the three sections. Sudo header. So I said no, it is a port number, a source port, the destination port, and the UDP header and data coming from the application layer. So from the application layer to connect the connection, it initiates the port number and IP address. The sudo header is a part of the header in which user datagram is to be encapsulated with some field filled with OIS. So usually in the UDP having that uh, service of encapsulation, well, according to the original data, some data will be added into the packet. Next. Congestion control. Since UDP is conditionless protocol, it does not provide congestion control. As I said, the condition oriented means the data will be delivered by order. Maybe uh, a congestion will occur, but, it, but this is a datagram delivery, so no congestion will occur in the network. UDP assumes that the packets sent are small and occasionally or at irregular travels and cannot create a congestion at the world. So it is a no order is mentioned in the UDP, so it will send irregularly to, through the network. So it the receiver end all the day. Uh, the receiver destination site it collects all the packet and it waits to integrate till the, all the packets are received in the destination end. This assumptions may this encapsulation and decapsulation. To send a message from one process to another, the UDP protocol encapsulates and decapsulates messages. Every message is having encapsulated with some other data, the same is decapsulated in the destination end. QE. So as I said, you know, once uh, uh, implementation of this UDP is uh, both incoming and outgoing queue. The queue is used to maintain the delivery of packets. No order is required. So it keeps the, the, the packets in the queue. Multiplexing and demultiplexing. Several processes that may want to use the service of UDP to handle the situation. UDP multiplexes and demultiplexes. That is a many data to one. The same side, the vice versa, uh, main one to many data conversion. So applications of UDP. UDP is used for management process such as SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. Used for root updating protocol such as um, RAP, Remote Invocation Protocol. Suitable uh, platform protocol for multicasting. Multicasting is capable of embedded in a UDP software. Multicasting means may, may send more data to uh, data to many client. Suitable for process that requires simple request response communication with little concern for flow and error control. Sometimes if it is required the simple uh, request and response, then we will select the UDP. Normally used for interactive real-time application that cannot be tolerated even delay between sections of the received. So in the real-time applications, if not requires uh, interactions more, then not uh, record the request and response, then we will use the uh, UDP. What I can tell you. Thank you.